Hi there, everyone. It is 4 o'clock here in New York. I'm Alicia Menendez in today for Nicole Wallace. We come on the air this afternoon in the midst of breaking news still developing at this hour. A truly chilling situation unfolding right now in Moscow. Early reports indicate there was a terror attack across multiple venues in the Russian capital, including a shopping mall and a concert venue. Russian media reporting armed gunmen in combat fatigues stormed a city building while a concert was taking place before opening fire on spectators. Russia's state news agencies say at least 40 people are dead and 100 more are injured. The roof of the concert hall, which is engulfed in flames, is in danger of collapse. Just two weeks ago, the U.S. Embassy in Russia sent out a bulletin warning that extremists in Russia had imminent plans to target large gatherings in Moscow, including concerts. Let's bring in former CIA director and NBC News senior national security analyst John Brennan. Uh, director Brennan, thank you so much for being with us. This is, of course, a developing situation. Can you give our audience just an understanding of the climate in Russia right now? Well, uh, unfortunately, Moscow is not a um, uh, unknown to uh, terrorist events. Uh, over the course of the past uh, number of years, past couple of decades, um, Moscow has been the scene of some terrorist attacks uh, perpetrated by a variety of groups. Uh, and uh, Moscow is a very highly urban environment, uh, people at the theater. And so this was taking place uh, at a large uh, gathering. Uh, which is why I think the early reports are the high number of, of dead and wounded. It appears as though if this was some type of coordinated attack, it was carried out by a group that clearly had planned this in advance. Um, and the fact that the U.S. Embassy issued this warning uh, previously about extremists having plans to carry out attacks, I think it demonstrates that there it was concern earlier that some groups might be carrying out these attacks. Now, uh, I think it's uh, quite early to uh, speculate who might be responsible for this. But uh, the Russians uh, have had a, a past of dealing rather brutally uh, with uh, terrorists who engage in these types of attacks. Uh, when there were a uh, hot large number of hostages taken previously, and whether it be at schools or at uh, theater, the ballet, uh, the Russians have dealt rather uh, severely. Uh, and uh, the response frequently has led to a large number of civilian casualties and casualties of hostages uh, that were taken by, by terrorist groups. So I'm sure that there is a uh, whole um, effort on the part of the Russian security uh, services and forces to uh, 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 secure these areas, uh, isolate uh, the terrorists, and then to deal with them, I think, again, rather uh, directly and, uh, if not brutally. Director Brennan, to talk about that bulletin from the U.S. Embassy in Russia warning that extremists in Russia had imminent plans to target large gatherings released just two weeks ago. Can you pull back the curtain for us and give us a sense of the type of traffic, the type of noise that leads to that type of bulletin being issued? Well, it refers uh, to extremists, which could refer to any number of, of groups. Uh, but uh, when something like this is issued, it usually is the result of some reliable information that has come in, either from human sources or from signals intelligence, from intercepted communications, and uh, probably not just a single source, uh, but uh, something that uh, has been corroborated, uh, which is why they went out with that public warning, uh, singling out extremists uh, being prepared to carry out these attacks. So this is something that the, the United States uh, government, the Biden administration, the State Department would have been working with the intelligence community uh, because they determined that the information or intelligence was of sufficient uh, specificity as well as specific uh, reliability that uh, led them to uh, issue that warning. Uh, also, it's been my experience that uh, if the U.S. intelligence had information like this about terrorist attacks taking place in Moscow, Russia, it would have been shared to some degree with Russian authorities as well, despite the fact that we are at odds with Russia over a, a, a variety of issues. Uh, if there was some type of uh, terrorist uh, threat information uh, that we believe that was important to get to the Russian authorities, uh, we would have done that. Director Brennan, that is retroactive. That is the intelligence that would have led to that bulletin. Can you talk me through what American intelligence is doing now? 
Well, they're clearly uh, going to be uh, combing any uh, intelligence that they might be obtaining now um, and uh, trying to uh, find out exactly, uh, again, who was responsible for this. Again, there are a variety of technical means, of human means. Um, I know that the uh, president of Ukraine, President Zelensky, has come out disavowing any type of formal Ukrainian involvement. I certainly do not believe that President Zelensky and the Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainian government, would have been behind something like this that very specifically targeted innocent civilians. Uh, so I'm sure that the uh, U.S. intelligence community is, is working with some other intelligence communities to try to find out what's going on. The concern they would have is that this might be part of not just a coordinated effort that took place uh, just now, but also whether or not this might be a, uh, a part of a plan of a series of attacks, uh, some other attacks might be uh, coming forward. So I think U.S. intelligence is most interested in finding out and uncovering whether or not there are some other attacks that are currently planned that if information is obtained on them, we might be able to stop them. Director Brennan, understanding that this is a developing and fluid situation, understanding we do not want to be speculative, but by, by way of understanding sort of the, the full picture here, can you talk us through the groups within Russia that could just simply pull off an attack of this scale? Well, um, when the Russians were involved in a lot of the uh, fighting in the Caucasus, in Chechnya and uh, southern Ossetia and other areas, there were a number of groups that uh, grew out of that conflict and carried the fight then to the streets of Moscow. Uh, it is possible uh, that with uh, what's the fighting that's going on in Ukraine now, there could be individuals who have uh, decided to take uh, matters uh, upon themselves and to carry it out. But uh, clearly, there's a fair amount of dissension within Russia itself. Uh, there are Russians who are launching attacks in the western part of, of Russia, uh, near the border with Ukraine, against uh, Russian targets and Russian authorities. So uh, there could be some domestic groups uh, that could have been motivated because they are disgusted with what the Putin regime continues to do uh, inside of Ukraine. There could be Russians who are upset at the continued suppression uh, that the Russian regime uh, is engaged in against uh, domestic opponents. We had the recent death of Alexei Navalny. Uh, so there are a variety of, of groups and individuals who have uh, their own uh, reasons and motivations why they might decide to carry out something like this. It's uh, quite unfortunate that it was directed against a number of, of civilians and the number of dead and injured now is, uh, is, so, is growing. Director Brennan, I'm going to ask you to stay with us. I want to bring in NBC News foreign correspondent Matt Bradley. Matt, this is, of course, a developing situation. What can you tell us? What is the latest? Well, it sounds like uh, from the TASS news agency that at least 40 people were killed and at least 100 people were injured. I wouldn't be surprised if that number continues to go up as the evening wears on and rescue efforts continue. We don't know a whole lot about this situation. And as we were just talking about, the big question is here, who perpetrated this? Was it a terrorist group? Was it Ukrainians? Was it dissidents who were opposed to Vladimir Putin, who was just reelected in elections that were widely considered to be manipulated and fraudulent? So there are all sorts of people who could be behind this, including the Chechens, who back 22 years ago, they launched a similar sort of attack where they took hostages uh, on a theater also in Moscow. That resulted in the deaths of hundreds of people, or more than 100 people, nearly 200 people, including quite a few children. This was a big disaster and one that is going to be in the the minds of a lot of Mosco Moscovites and Russians as they think about this situation. They're going to be obviously looking for some sort of political uh, motive behind this, and we haven't yet heard somebody coming out and claiming responsibility. We don't even know if the somewhere between two to five gunmen who, again, entered there wearing camouflage, it looks like they had bombs that they deployed as well. That's what started, I think, that fire that you're seeing on your screen, or we can, we can assume that there was some sort of incendiary device because now that theater is burning. Uh, this is a, a situation that is definitely going to uh, really start what is probably going to be some sort of massive sweeping crackdown in Russia, a country that we've already seen does not brook dissent, not 
against Vladimir Putin, nor against the war in Ukraine. So this is, you know, probably going to start a new phase in what we've been seeing in the political crackdown throughout the country. Uh, and we can probably expect that that will start very, very soon because we've already seen a lot of, um, of a lack of sympathy for political dissonance uh, in Moscow and in Russia. Yeah.